A man designs a system that solves the climate apocalypse, but years later it's hacked and he must fight with his brother to prevent a great storm from destroying the planet. That's why today, Geostorm. Remember that if you like the videos, you can support the channel by liking, subscribing, and activating notifications. It's free and it really helps me to keep growing. Now, let's recap. The story begins with images of extreme blizzards, aggressive seas, and natural disasters, while the voice of a little girl tells us all that happened in 2019 in a phenomenon called extreme weather, when the temperature increased and tornadoes, floods, droughts devastated entire cities. The girl tells us many things, but what is really important to know is that a satellite system called Dutch Boy was created under the leadership of China and the United States to neutralize the weather. This system is controlled from the International Space Station mainly by the United States and the man leading the team is her father. After this intro, we go to Washington to meet this man. His name is Jake Lawson, and he is going to a Senate session where he is accused of activating the satellite system without authorization. There is also his younger brother Max, who tries to calm him down by sending him text messages with emojis, but Jake doesn't pay much attention to him and ends up losing his leadership over the Dutch boy, being replaced by Max himself. Three years pass from this and everything seems normal until an extreme snowstorm destroys a village in Afghanistan, so the White House goes on alert. But before going to an emergency meeting, Max flirts with Sarah Wilson, who is a Secret Service agent and apparently also his secret girlfriend. At this meeting, he meets with the President of the United States and his entire team. And according to what they say, the most worrying thing is that what happened in Afghanistan is leaked, as this could affect them in the next election. There, Max gets upset and demands an investigation. The President accepts it and Leonard Deccan, who is the Secretary of State, asks his brother Jake to return work. Meanwhile, on the International Space Station, a scientist seeks to find out what happened to the Afghanistan satellite and makes a secret data transfer, which he hides in his locker. But shortly after this, he dies when he's ejected into space. We then travel with Max to Florida in search of his older brother, where he's reunited with his niece Hannah, who is the same girl who spoke to us in the beginning of the film. And even though the brothers have a little argument, Jake agrees to go back to work with him. But now the problems begin in Hong Kong, where the temperature rises and the ground begins to burn to such a point they can cook fried eggs on the asphalt. And after causing a disaster by gas explosions, the temperature drops out of nowhere back to normal. Later, Jake promises his daughter that he'll return safely and leaves to space where he's received by Ute, a German scientist who is now in charge. She introduces him to the whole team, and there we meet Duncan, the programmer, and Hernandez. And even though they don't welcome him very kindly at first, everything changes when they find out that Jake is the creator of the Dutch boy himself. Back on Earth, as Max and his girlfriend Sarah discuss breaking the work rules by going public with their relationship, they are interrupted by a call from Hong Kong. And here, we meet Cheng, who is also part of the Dutch boy's team. By this point, Chang discovered that what happened in Hong Kong wasn't reported by the satellite and his access to the system was blocked, so they both begin to suspect a cover-up from the White House and the possibility of a global storm occurring. And it's not long after that call when undercover men arrive at the office where Chang is, and even though he quickly hides, he manages to see how they search the whole place. Max is alarmed about all of this and goes to see Dana, a Secret Service hacker who helps him discover that he doesn't have access to the system either, thanks to an international block by the White House itself. Soon after, the brothers make a video call to talk about the blockages to the system, and this leads Jake to examine the satellite that caused the damage, but when he tries to do so, the station's robotic arm goes out of control and destroys it completely. The only thing they manage to rescue from there is a video where they discover that there is a panel stuck in the communication tower and they must go after it, so together with Oot, they leave for the space mission. Out of nowhere, Jake starts having problems in his suit and flies off, but when he's almost getting lost in space, he manages to return to the station. Then being safe, he confesses to Oot that he was able to recover the hard drive and that he prefers not to tell the others because he distrusts everyone. He then examines it and discovers that the death of the first scientist was intentional and that there's an infiltrator on the station. With this suspense, we go to Washington where Max and Sarah are waiting for Cheng, but when they go to him, they see how a man pushes him and a car runs over him, killing Chen almost instantly. But before he dies, Cheng manages to say a word to Max. After this, the brothers make another video call, and this time Jake apologizes to his younger brother and reminds him of a fishing anecdote with his father in a pep talk that seems to be of not much importance for now. So as certain as we are, Max takes the video of the conversation to Dana and tells her that their father never took them fishing. Oh. That's sad. They then discover that Jake was speaking in code and managed to decipher the real message, which says that he has evidence of sabotage in high places in the government and that they shouldn't trust anyone. At that moment, Max remembers the last words of his friend Cheng and asks Dana to find out everything related to Project Zeus. But the only one who has access to those files is Sarah and even though she doesn't want it at first, she later agrees to help. 
Meanwhile, Jake and Oke get help from a French agent and find the information that the murdered scientist had saved. And this is how they discover that the Dutch boy has a virus and that it was intentionally implanted. Then we go back to Washington where Dana manages to access the Project Zeus files and finds tens of thousands of storm plans around the world and they all end with a geostorm which is a chain of extreme weather events at the same time. With this information and his hacker friend, Max manages to make an unmonitored video call with his older brother, and he tells them that the only solution is to shut down the entire system to reboot it and clean it of the virus. But for this, they need the codes to which only the president has access, and as Jake distrusts him, they decide not to ask for them, but to get them in another way. Then Max tells Sarah everything, and together they come up with a new plan. On top of that, 200 satellites start to collapse, and this generates an extreme hail rain in Tokyo, and the sea freezes in Rio de Janeiro. Seeing these disasters, Jake comes up with the idea of taking the failing satellites off course and replacing them with new ones, and then try it with one in Rio de Janeiro. But all this only causes the system to display an alert about the geostorm, and a 90-minute countdown begins. Meanwhile on Earth, we see that there is a conversation with the president and his team in Florida where a storm is approaching. Max has a conversation with Deccan and he tells him everything he knows about Project Zeus. And finally, he asks for his help to access the codes he needs. What neither Max nor we knew is that these codes are a biometric system composed of the president's 10 fingerprints and retinas, so to get them, they must talk to him. Meanwhile in the space station, the problems continue. Now the process of self-destruction of the ship begins, and they order everyone to escape in the shuttles. At that moment, they need the help of the programmer Duncan, but nobody knows where he is, so Jake looks for him and a fight starts between them. But at one point, Duncan is armed and agrees to have infiltrated the virus in exchange for money. So Jake continues to fight, and by mistake, some bullets are fired that break the glass of a door. But Jake runs out of the room, and seconds later, the glass shatters completely, and that's when the force of space drags everything, including Duncan, who dies immediately. As the convention in Florida continues, we realize that Deccan is not as good as we thought, since he tricked Max and now wants to kill him. But this one quickly escapes and looks for Sarah to tell her everything. Then the secret boyfriends plan to kidnap the president, since it is the only way out, and so end up catching him. At the same time, the members of the space station try to flee in the shuttles, and there are only 55 minutes left until the geostorm, when multiple tornadoes start in Mumbai, destroying everything. And when Max and Sarah take the president hostage, they see behind their backs how the stadium where the convention was being held explodes, and a thunderstorm begins. At that moment, Sarah drives like a race car driver, dodging every obstacle on the road, while Max talks to the president and tells him everything, including the fact that he has a relationship with the star driver. Dukan's accomplice locate them and start chasing them, but in the midst of the natural disaster, Sarah manages to drive perfectly while shooting and killing one of the pursuers, and then the president tells Max just what we would tell him. Mario. The chase continues until our heroine Sarah causes the enemy's car to crash and after several turns also explodes. After that, we return to the space station where the last shuttle was about to leave, but Jake tells Oot that he must stay to run the system reboot manually and sadly they say goodbye. Meanwhile in Florida, Deccan asks his driver to stop in the middle of the road and pulls a missile launcher out of the trunk to shoot at the car where the president is supposedly in, but is then surprised by Sarah as it turns out Deccan was unknowingly being tracked and is taken prisoner. Meanwhile on the other side of the world in Dubai, a giant wave begins to flood the desert and the city with only 8 minutes left until the geostorm. But when they finally go to give Jake the codes, the president greets him, thanking him for his sacrifice, and just like us, Max doesn't understand what they are talking about. It turns out that the codes reset the system but don't stop the self-destruct of the station where Jake is alone. So after a sad goodbye with his younger brother and with less than 5 minutes to the climactic disaster, Jake runs all over the station and starts to lose gravity. So now he's wearing a spacesuit to survive. Nerves get the better of Jake and he becomes desperate as he opens one of the doors to move forward. But that's when he hears Oot's voice offering to help him, who without him knowing had stayed on the station. And it was a very nice gesture but the global disaster doesn't stop. There is only one minute and a half to the end and they must continue, so they quickly enter the system and begin to shut down the satellites. Only 10 seconds before the geostorm they execute the manual reset of the Dutch boy, making the climatic events fade away. Then the sea in Dubai recedes and the tornadoes in India and the storm in Florida disappear. At NASA, everyone celebrates that they have stopped the catastrophe, but Jake and Oot are still trapped in the space station that is being destroyed. Suddenly, Jake sees a satellite and together with Oot, they enter it. Luckily, NASA realizes this and calls for a shuttle to rescue them, and now they are finally reunited with Hernandez. In the end, everyone celebrates, and then they are welcomed back to Earth safe and sound. Quickly six months go by and we see our favorite brothers and Hannah fishing, and apparently Jake is sharing a day with his family before returning to space to work on rebuilding the project, because now they will be making a new international space station that will be just like the future of the planet, it will belong to everyone. 
That was Geostorm. Don't forget to comment what movie you would like me to recap. Like, subscribe, and turn on notifications so you don't miss the next video.